Hello. Hi. I don't know. We'll, we'll have, I, I don't know how to turn this off. <laughs> Anyways. Wow, I'm so close. I have minimal makeup today. Woo! Okay, I'm getting ready for my life coaching appointment. Had some interesting times with work stuff. You know, when you know, it's really hard to not know. It's really hard to play dumb. It's really hard to be ignorant when you're not. And it's it's just annoying me and frustrating me. And I also feel like I should have been a lawyer, but yeah. <sighs> also, last night our governor decided to make a stay-at-home order. You can only leave your house to take a walk, walk your dog, and also like essential things like grocery stores or doctors or something like that. <sighs> It's just been a rough day of not doing much. I did edit, I also published, that was really quick, 18th. And I think once I do more of these, I'll feel a little better. I'm still getting a lot of anxiety, a lot of trying to, to make definite decisions about things. I don't know, that's the best way to put it. And it's not really easy or ideal, I guess. I often get stuck between, I mean recently, wanting to make clear set decisions and taking things day by day. That didn't make sense. I don't know. I'm... Ugh. Anyways, anyways, anyways. I should sing. I haven't sang in a long time. In a very long time. Hmm. Let's sing a little bit of this while we're waiting. When you're immune to all my pain, yeah. Ever since you knew your power, and now every time our love goes sour, you won't sympathize. You see these tears falling down to my ears, my ears. I swear you like when I'm in pain. Yeah, baby. My voice is obviously not very good for this right now. Sucks the way I'm singing. Yeah. I'll talk to you later. Bye. La 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 la. Oh, it's so dark. And I'm so far up. Look at that. Look at that lighting. Or look at that. That's my iPad. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm trying to just go a little I'm not in the right headspace today I just got off the phone with my life coach and we we're talking about these YouTube videos my anxiety behind them and also the joy they bring to my heart and what I've also noticed and she pointed out as well when I speak and I believe in what I say I don't feel like I have much problem expressing but then when I have doubts about what I'm saying because I'm saying too much, because I'm not saying the right thing, because I'll lose someone or something like a job or a partner or a person, a friend or whatever. I get in my head so much and I start blanking. I start stumbling over what I'm saying. I start going in circles or like this way of talking, but without really actually saying anything, which drives me crazy. When other people do it, it's so hard to understand. And then it drives me crazy when when I do it as well. Oh, and I'm not, wait a minute. I need to put this shirt on today. Look at that. It says, be a nice human. And I put it on for what I wanted to talk about today. Yeah, like right now, I'm sort of discombobulated was the word that I used a little bit ago and am doubting what I'm saying, thinking too much about what I'm saying. I'm afraid to say what I want to say. There's some things that happened or are happening at work, which I feel are very unfair and I'm trying to find the words to communicate that to them and to hear uh, to you because it is something that I truly believe in. I get very frustrated, very angry at unfairness. It is what I perceive to be unfair. That's fair to say, but I really believe in it. I'm also kind of tired of trying to explain and to prove what I believe in. And I'm kind of tired to explain and prove why I, I feel the need to say what I feel the need to say, why I believe in the message that I'm saying and the importance of it. Kind of tired to feel that way. And I'm not necessarily getting that from other people. I'm not necessarily getting that from myself either. It's a combination, you know, it's both. Na, 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 na.
Okay, anyways, all right, all right. So this is kind of an example of what we just talked about. When I got in that flow, in that zone, because I really believed in what I wanted to say, I got so excited and so enthusiastic. I wasn't playing with the camera as much. <laughs> My thoughts weren't as scattered as they are right now. The moment that I started thinking and doubting and being scared of what I have to say, I was trying to make it as perfect as possible. And that's not exactly true. I was trying to make it perfect. Say it in the perfect way to not say too much, too little, to find the perfect words, etc, etc. I just said to my mom earlier into Pine Tree, I should have been a lawyer. Because I do, I do like the challenge of finding the precise words to say to be very effective very powerful but also very elevated and professional let's use it let's use the words that i want to use like eighth gradery kind of thing people don't take you as seriously and they dismiss it so yeah elevated i feel like i need to to be taken seriously and then even then you don't you don't necessarily get taken seriously the issue that i have today i really truly strongly believe that someone in this unprecedented circumstance should should not be discriminated against for choosing to stay home safe for their own personal health as well as for the people that they live with to be honest with you i am very worried about me getting sick i can sit here and say oh i'm not worried about myself but i will never do that because i am i don't want to get my parent my grandparents sick that is something that i thought of like the guilt of that kind of hit me last week or two weeks ago the people at work are constantly sick they come in sick i've spoke about this they also come in and just are not that responsible i feel like i don't know i don't know what it is maybe because we're so condensed in a in a tight room or something i don't know i don't really know why but i've never been this sick and i said maybe it's because my immunity is low because of stress or because this year was an, a weird year with viruses and sicknesses i don't know but i wash my hands like crazy at work, I only use paper towels. I had my own paper towel from home that I brought to... Okay, sometimes losing my train of thought slash words is a language thing, not a <laughs> fear thing. Planza, what do you call it? Handles, door handles. <laughs> everything I'm so cautious because I was very sick in December I lost my voice that was not fun and that was not cool and that was taking my normal precautions I don't share food I don't share anything I wipe things off and I used to think that people who do that had lower immune systems but it was just my instinct walking in there and seeing how people treated their space and the shared space as well it was my instinct like mm, I need to take extra precau precautions here and the attitude behind it too like oh you know you're just in Romania I probably I would be called a city girl or something you know you're you're exaggerated you're spoiled I've been made to feel bad for wanting cleanliness like I expect too much to have a clean environment is expecting too much and I definitely have felt I was speaking to Pine Tree a few weeks ago I can't believe that you know we were like watching a movie a few weeks ago we were at the movie theater a few weeks weeks ago and now we're like all in the house i'm so so like you you have no idea how happy i am and relieved i am that he's staying home starting tomorrow oh my gosh for him and his family and oh, um but anyways so i yeah i was just kind of speaking about that feeling that here in ohio which is a, a very generalized statement and a very false statement there's plenty of people here that are very into cleanliness there's plenty of workplaces that renovate their workplace they take care of their employees is how I would view it but a lot of workplaces would say no we do take care of our employees like confirmation bias or whatever you know uh, not confirmation bias or something else I can think of right now this is the perfect example that I'm like second guessing myself or I'm, I'm too afraid and this is honestly to speak on that for a second it's so frustrating I used to be so for those two years it just felt so good to speak my mind without fearing speaking my mind it was heaven it was 
incredibly rewarding and fulfilling and so good and empowering i did so much more in those two years than i've ever done socializing wise meeting people the way i interacted with people the way i interviewed would be so much better confidence etc etc hustling and all that so it's frustrating right now that i see it i see what's happening and i can't really get in front of it but i guess i also need to learn patience that it's not overnight i'll get there again or maybe i don't i don't know but i'm taking measures to do so but i don't remember what i was trying to say i kind of i feel like i went on to branches and branches and branches most enthusiasm that i've ever had for a job coming in here i mean i was promised so much of my dream coming true as far as a job as a day job nine to five or office eight to five it's actually nine to six kind of a job i was so i felt like oh my gosh this is meant to be it was like stars aligned the way that the interview went the way that the position that i had originally applied to wasn't available anymore but they wanted me for this position that i had searched for so long i started crying i started crying when i got the offer i had red flags you know the offer wasn't like usual they didn't know exempt versus non-exempt employees what that was there were like pretty big major red flags i do get very enthusiastic about it very positive hopeful whatever and i don't really ask the tough questions i wanted it you know and i wanted to believe that it was great and perfect and all that i didn't see the rest of the employees i didn't see all this stuff and i was even warned by some little things as far as that and well if the employer warns you then it's probably worse than it is you know because who does that no one says like are you sure you want to work here it's like okay and of course like what do you want to say like without knowing the circumstance and without putting myself in in that i wouldn't know i would say yes that sounds okay it doesn't sound like anything that would turn me off from it but anyways long story short there were red flags and red flags and red flags but i one i needed i needed to believe that this was the right place for me and that this was sent from the heavens stars aligning you know the universe i mean it was i don't think that it wasn't lately especially the way that this has been handled i don't appreciate it i don't feel valued the worst part is that i see how employees are treated you know when you get people who don't know too much you kind of can do whatever you want be nice to their face and they'll buy it like, oh maybe I was like exaggerating or whatever but when you know enough to not buy into that it's really hard to keep your mouth shut and to go along with that I have done that though I've done both of those I've heard things and this person like really they they don't see anything wrong with that I don't even know how, how to explain it there's a word but I don't really no words right now oh without going into specific details into a specific example of another employee and what they went through that was for me was like wait do you really not realize what just happened what <laughs> like that's all i can say without going into those details that would be beneficial probably but i respect people's privacy both the individual and the company and but that happened a lot it was heavy to see and then when I was practically being silenced to not panic people which I shared the thing I did not panic anyone there was something that was making the situation have the gravity that it should have that it did have that it does have now you don't want to I didn't want to be I told you so I wanted to be proactive but they took the road of I'd rather regret it later than be proactive you know just feeling like I was being silenced from sharing information that was very vital to protecting other employees uh, to for the other employees to protect themselves that was just something that I I felt very uncomfortable with right now the situation of me not getting paid for these past weeks of them making it seem like they're trying to spin things around is what they're trying to do right now and I don't appreciate it but I feel very uh, helpless I feel like there's nothing I can do and there are a couple times in my past where employers have done that like one was like this very shady business I mean it like 
like business bureau had a very low rating and some issues with them you know but i was again just kind of like oh, like, oh this will be fine oh it's you know i i believe you know whatever in those moments i lost a lot of money because i felt helpless and i didn't feel like i could fight that and you can't really fight that and this is my way of fighting it i guess of speaking the truth on here oh, it's not gonna help me it's not gonna get me my money back that i'm not being allowed to have i'm not being allowed not being allowed is that how you say it yeah i'm not allowed to work right now and i wanted to work really there's what i do can be easily done from home i all i do is sit on the computer and edit the website or make flyers and ideally i would have edited film <sighs> it's just frustrating it's frustrating and it's definitely frustrating when it gets spun around to you and of course employers will do that because they don't want to lose they don't want to admit they're wrong but they want to get away with as much as possible they want to not pay people if they can get away with that yeah it's just it feels very just morally there's some questions and maybe we have just different morals it, it's been hard wanting to speak about this and i feel like i've spoken about it enough depending on what how the situation progresses well i'll revisit that but i think i spoke about it enough and there's plenty of other things that i can speak of that may bring me joy and bring you joy and can make us feel better in this time not this you know i mean i feel this is very important to talk about because i'm sure so many people are in this boat and even worse boats of being fired because they have no way to pay them or their job is inexistent right now with all the closings and everything or you know they're sick and they can't go in and the companies don't pay for them because they may be part-time or they may be you know whatever is not with medical leave that's the other thing the country since i started in the past 10 15 years that i well 10 years that i've started working i remember a time when there was vacation there was paid time off and there was sick days separate and now it's all combined and it's less I think companies have the choice of how they set up the different pay time off options, but most companies will take the one that will cost them less. And so employees become less employees, less human beings and more robots. And I, I do feel strongly like th about this subject and about airing this out. I think a lot of people want to talk about this and are talking about this probably on Facebook and whatever methods they find they choose to express what they're going through and this is mine I'm currently still employed as far as I know but and it's frustrating because I feel like I'm being pushed out I'm not quitting I'm not gonna quit I don't want to I want the money and I want to work I'm being right now sort of kept from working when I could easily work it's not ideal but I could buy a laptop myself because i don't want to share i also don't really have space on my personal laptop and i don't want to share personal laptop i want to protect my data and all that stuff and i want to protect that data like i don't want to mix it if an asteroid comes you know comes to hit the earth you're not gonna sit there for like weeks to figure out how to stop it or how to get out of its way you know and that's kind of what it feels like right now this false sense of luxury that there's time and there's options meanwhile this whole thing could have been handled a lot better for everyone and possibly been eradicated almost but not impossible way that the world could have come together and handled it of everyone seeing the moment that it happens everything shuts down for two three weeks and then i don't know like when you stop recording or before i press record and before it says wreck it's really weird messaging on the screen but anyways but yes i i get that's a very tall task uh to ask for especially having almost no precedence there was the the spanish flu is what this is I think compared to but there was other there were other things that with action they were able to be stopped and either eradicated or at least stopped from spreading as much and as fast and this was also maybe biologically some a virus that was a faster spread i'm very unhappy with the inaction and the the way some companies some people are not taking it seriously and therefore are causing the panic they're the ones causing the panic you know when people are seeing like well 
danger is here, danger is coming, danger is here. And they're like, oh, don't panic, don't panic, everything's fine. Like, but I see it and it's here and it's real. And I know like, it's okay, you're safe, you're young, you're fine, you're safe. But uh, it's gonna affect my family and it might affect me. I don't want it, especially because it can be prevented and it's not asking too much of you. Then I have a problem with that, you know, anyways. I want to briefly talk about some other, a couple of other things. I have to stop saying that I don't know what I want to do, that I don't know what I'm doing. Like this thought came into my head of, I can do YouTube. I can, I can make this work. There's ways, there's so much possibility with this. And it feels like a job, but it feels like such a good job. It feels like such a good fit. And then I get into my head like, well, but you won't earn money. Why? Because you haven't earned money in the past from it. Okay. You don't know what's going on in the future. Yeah, you don't know what's going on in the future. I could be laid off whether I show up to work or not. My position technically is not that indispensable. Technically, you know, it's marketing. So it's not that crucial. I'm not manufacturing the thing. The company itself could disappear. There's so many things so many things yet i feel when we want to do something that we really feel good about we put those limitations more on those things than other things the things that are more in our control is when we put more limitations on them versus out of control if i'm self-employed is that a raccoon or a cat pretty sure that's a raccoon i don't know because it went the other way we put our lives in other people's hands and feel more secure doing that than in our own hands and i feel so close to having had enough of that. I find it so odd, don't you? Not everyone works for other people, not everyone works for themselves. People will kind of tell you what they feel comfortable with, sometimes because that's really what they do like and feel comfortable with, sometimes it's because that's what they've limited themselves to or have been limited by society, you know, in, in some circumstances you do have a limit uh, based on the government system you have or based on the economic structure etc etc you know so there's like things that are outside of your control but when there is some control sometimes we put things outside of our control that are in our control and I feel that's where I am now I feel I have more control than I think I do the other thing was, you know, talking too much uh, that we talked about. Talking too much, I mean, not the other thing, it is kind of the only thing, but talking too much as far as, ah! Okay, talking too much as far as people in my life. She's like, well, have you considered that maybe they will disagree with what you have to say? Maybe they will feel uncomfortable with what you have to say or that you're saying it, but maybe they'll still be your friend or be more than a friend or, you know, it's kind of like family. Uh, sometimes family is very strong and, oh, you can't do that. Most of the time they will still love you. They will still be by your side or there for you. They kind of tried maybe to scare you to not do that because they truly believe that's not in your favor or their favor I guess maybe in friendships and stuff but some people do stay even if they don't like what you have to say and you have a different opinion or a different way to go about living your life etc and that's something that I want to explore because and I have been exploring because it seems pretty vital to my life I can't shut up for the rest of my life and not be myself and not say what is just in me to say and what makes me diseased in a way or feel sick physically by not saying. These are not necessarily bad things, nor are they good things all the time, but sometimes I get scared to say good things about my situation with Pine Tree, for example, which is in actuality a beautiful one. It can also be an ugly one, it depends on how you look at it, but there's so much beauty in it all that we've gone through and been through and I get very scared to say even that much if if what if it's saying too much and he'll be like oh Rena, I can't say that and I've been afraid to say good things in general and then I thought about it I think today maybe yesterday thought about it I'm afraid to look like a fool I'm afraid to look like the wool has been pulled over my eyes too not just for that person to leave whether I say good or bad about them but also afraid that I'm saying something good when it's not good you know and they're like oh there is she's such a fool or other people like I see him do this and she doesn't see that you know and that comes from a, a real place having been there on the 
other side where I mentioned this last time I think I had this incident where someone cheated on their girlfriend longtime girlfriend with me and I don't know I feel like I owe it to a lot of people who have been in this situation other people who might have friends family partners who have been in the situation and they don't understand or they judge and, and criticize things that they don't know I feel like I owe it to to that part of the world to speak my perspective on it because the way that it happened I didn't know at the beginning and we would just make out and all that stuff and it was really weird because I didn't feel it but I was like like he showed interest and he likes me and like I was very naive I don't know how else to describe it I felt like something and I was always like oh it's it's meant to be because it felt this way sort of thing I wasn't aggressive I was like more going along with things so I've always been that way I still kind of default to the other person like oh you know if you don't like me that's fine or oh if you like me cool you know and I think at that time I was like I was like gauging it you know because in my mind at that time even though I, I was aware people cheated and all that stuff but in my mind I honestly I honestly genuinely thought that if you showed interest and the other person was taken they would turn you down I, I don't know why I thought that way this guy was not like that again I didn't know I'm I didn't ask because I didn't think I needed to ask again I thought I'm showing interest you showing interest back means that you're available and available means you are with no one else like we sort of flirted and we sent some text messaging and I was like being risque with my text messaging and I I remember feeling at one point like this is a lot this is too sexual and I don't I don't feel comfortable with that I felt that that's all this guy wanted from me but again somehow I don't know how to explain it to you except that this is really what was going on in my head I thought well that's just what people do or like it, I just thought he really liked me and I don't know that he yeah <laughs> And so I think I went over his place at one point. I don't remember how. And it was like he, we never went out anywhere else, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was only twice that I went over besides that one time at the end. Like we just sat and watched, I don't know, something po political on TV. I don't really remember. Except that at one point we did start making out, I think. I remember just sitting there on the couch and I'm like, I'm not feeling anything. I will never forget that. I really did not feel anything from from him or about it it's like oh like kind of like when is this over kind of so I don't know I didn't I still don't really know what I have some theories of what was going on but and then we still would flirt and blah 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 I went the second time I went around and it went a little further I saw a picture with this other girl for the first time that was the only indication that I ever had about him being with someone I literally could not speak I literally I remember I could not find my words I was like kind of paralyzed and I just I I didn't know what to do I didn't know even I couldn't even think and I left I texted him after that are you with someone or is that your ex or like who what is that picture he didn't reply and he didn't reply again and he didn't reply again and then eventually three days later he replied that I think too much and he doesn't like that you would think I would think now at 34 years old I wouldn't understand what that is but at that time I just kind of was I just I pushed a button and I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and I've I've still done that so much since unfortunately and I hate myself when I do that um I just I honestly in my head I thought well maybe that's an ex that they just broke up and maybe he just isn't over her yet but he likes me or maybe he's conflicted etc 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 like honestly excuses that I'm sure you've heard or you'll hear or you said but I remember it wasn't long after I, I think it was that following week I think but I'm, I'm not sure exactly we like stop things I said I wasn't comfortable going forward but I remember going into the bathroom and a few days later or weeks later and I remember and I described this in the other video my heart just clicking off trust in men basically swore that I would never trust a man again or ever and 
that was after I spoke with some people that knew him. They confirmed that that was his current girlfriend and they've been in a relationship for years. I felt betrayed for her. And it was a horrible situation because I also still said, well, but maybe... Maybe they're not, you know, they're not happy together and maybe they're like on the verge of breaking up but no one else knows it and all this stuff. Either way, we stopped and then I saw her. I didn't really mean her, mean her, but she came in and it was horrible and I would talk to these people, mutual friends, just how like it it was it made my stomach sink it was just horrible like I really wanted to tell her because I felt so bad for her I felt so bad not as a pity she was better than this you know I'm sure like that's why I feel this like I don't want to look like a fool and yet I feel like I have been just that more than enough times since then I survived each time so I kind of keep saying that to myself but it's hard and it takes its toll on you and you start just closing yourself off and you shouldn't to finish that story though yeah i don't really ex know exactly what but i will admit that this is not my shiniest moment and i don't think that i i did the right thing so i'm not apologizing for it but i'm also not not apologizing for it because it's it's not very very nice of me or moral but i ended up one night i was angry or something and i was like well this guy clearly because i am more than and sure that I wasn't the only one but I don't know and I just kind of shut down and I became less human and less feeling and I was like well this guy could care less about his girlfriend or about me about anything so I kind of became in that mindset I started feeling or thinking that as well I'm like okay well he's gonna do that I'm gonna do that too to him I'm gonna take what I want to wait I'm gonna take what I want from him and I won't feel bad about it because I mean it's not like he doesn't want it either after that I did reach out to her and tell her what had happened and I did that because what I did and me reaching out to her were two separate things I think shutting myself down becoming less of a victim helped me get the courage to tell her what I wanted to tell her before anything happened or before you know anything big happened. I don't regret any of it because it was an experience that has taught me so much and has given my life so much but it also took away so much. It took away my innocence, it took away my trust in people, it took away my happiness and I feel in a way my ability to let myself be loved and to find to find healthy relationships and to develop healthy relationships so i forgot i had mascara on no crap <laughs> and i remember she was very angry and she didn't believe me and they were together and i actually i worked with someone years later that dated him dated him went out with him a couple times and uh she's like yeah they're not together anymore i'm like I feel in a way that like I've been on the other side of things too. I've held on to things more than I than I felt than people felt that I should. In the name of love, it's so hard to be objective in relationships because you don't you are not in someone else's head and if they don't share things with you and you get one picture even when you have some gut instinct it's hard to think of the other side of that picture to know what is real it seems obvious when you're watching a movie or after you've lived through it but in that moment it doesn't seem obvious at all and even if it does seem somewhat obvious it's still very conflicting and you get some sort of reward from not seeing it that way too but that yeah it cost me I feel like it cost me a true loving healthy relationship after that, I came into everything with distrust, feeling like every guy cheats, every guy just wants sex. No one is, not even just guys, but also girls, because I would hear things from one particular friend and another that does not sound like true love. Just, I, yeah, I felt like you just get hurt and you don't really get loved for real. 
and people are just together because they're because they're weak or something that's yeah it's been something difficult to deal with is that truly kind of a lack of ability to know if that happens and the truth and relying on how you feel someone loves you or doesn't love you and how much are you getting in your own way to not feel that or are they really not loving you and I found us to be so much more difficult than I think it would have. I keep telling him that if we would have met 15 years ago, wait, he would be way too young. <laughs> Hold on. Because <laughs> he is, okay, uh, so like 10 years ago? <laughs> But yeah, 15 years ago, you know, but just for legal reasons, we wouldn't be together because I would I would be too old for him. If we would have met, you know, before we got into the relationships we got into, how much we would have probably been happy together. Honestly, I do believe that. And that might make me a fool. I don't know. <laughs> I'm crying because I feel vulnerable. When I say something nice like that and hopeful and positive, I feel like a fool. I feel like, oh, Arena, you're just so stupid. That's not how the world works and people are not good. Because I really believe that people are good. And that's where I'm coming from. Of The complications came from being hurt and from like all these things, how people affected us how people interacted with us and what people did to us which some it's something that people don't like to say anymore that oh someone doesn't do anything to you i'm like okay cool yes but before you're enlightened you need to also kind of keep it real as well like People do do things to you. They cut you off in traffic. It's not that they didn't do that to you. They didn't make you feel angry, maybe, sure. But they cut you off, you know? So people do do things to you. I don't know. I, I appreciate his wisdom sometimes. He brings me back down to emotional earth when I can get very righteous and very sort of angry and injustice and all that stuff. And all right. <laughs> well, this isn't too bad actually, but it kind of is. And I appreciate when he does that sometimes. Not in the moment as much as afterwards when I calm down and I'm like, okay, he has sort of a point. But also like to an extent, I have to be careful because I also bring to him freedom to express yourself and and being yourself, not politically correcting yourself all the time. And he brings me the that, you know, so we kind of balance each other. And so I appreciate that your, your temperature went up and now I forgot what I was saying because it takes some time to like you shut off and then you have to come back on and all this stuff. I wish sometimes that I could stop thinking and analyzing because I feel like that gets in the way. But I, don't, I also don't know. I just feel very unsure of everything. I don't know if I think too much or if I don't think enough. Or if I think too much and don't act enough. I know I feel good when I'm nice, but I also don't feel good when I'm nice just because I have to be nice. I feel good to love. I don't feel good to hate. I feel good to be loved. It just kind of ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. I'm still kind of scared to say that, but that's my truth. These fears that we have in us and the lack of belief that we have in us being loved and accepted for who we are. If I'm really honest with myself, I don't want to be loved for who I need to be to be loved and I don't want him to be loved for who he needs to be to be loved I don't want him to cut out pieces of himself what the heck okay that's a cat so weird these animals that's a scary thought but i think like it's a journey i don't know i feel like i am kind of scattered with this i wasn't really prepared to talk about this maybe i should talk about it another time it's just so complicated to know why you are where you are is it because you're not created for each other in a romantic way? Or is it because you are, but your fears win or outwin is what I want to say. I don't know if that's a word. Where there's fear, you can't have love. And also where there's love, you can't have fear. I just have this like very naive desire and little imagination moment scenario of us just being us and being happy for it. You know, just getting along just so effortlessly. 
happy because we're not afraid to be ourselves with each other. And we discover that, like pa Paulo Coelho, you know, tell your heart that the fear of pain is worse than pain itself or something like that. I hang on to those moments because there's just so much that's in our heads that we put onto other people. And I've seen how much he's put onto me that's not mine. And so knowing that, it's just there's so much out there that's still hidden that could be magically beautifully amazing just makes it easier to keep going when you get hurt when it's not perfect and i can be criticized by that and i feel like he has criticized me in a way for that for like working too hard and it's something that isn't working it's kind of like how i feel at my job you know i see i see things and people who don't see things, they're saying that I, I think too much or that I try too much or that I want too much, that I expect too much, etc, etc. It's like, no, it's real. I've lived it or I see it. Or, and it's a battle you neither will win because you both see it just differently. I think it starts with me being more authentic and doing these vlogs and risking that That I might say too much. At the end of the day, I just want to be happy. And I want him to be happy. It's just, I'm trying to share how scary that is. Because I don't think a lot of us believe that we can be happy. I think we hide so much because we're scared we can't be loved as we are and therefore we won't be happy but i told him you know would you rather be loved for who you're not or me and everyone hating you but you being authentically yourself and then i discovered that i haven't been doing that and here i am i may say the wrong thing i may say too much i may not say enough so actually when i say too much it's also that i don't say enough i may be wrong i may be foolish but the world the future that i see and that i want is when we're not hiding the more you hide the more fragile you are oh my gosh there's so much dust in the, this car the new car i'm sorry i'm distracted because you're going to overheat this is kind of getting cold because i turned off for the battery's sake i don't know if this is better or worse well you're fragile the more you hide yourself the more you have to hide the more fragile you are the the weaker you are and not weak as like you know manly weak but it means you have more to lose and that you are convinced that you will lose that whereas when you're transparent and just yourself and honest then you are confident that you're strong enough and that what you do and what you say and who you are is good etc etc and nothing can like really hit you you know can really break you apart as a person but also as a couple the people who hide are the ones who i truly believe yeah who are most fragile my soul for sure will survive as long as i'm true to myself and true to life and whatever is that weird i feel like that's really weird i feel that that probably doesn't make sense to anyone who's watching this that's probably too is it esoteric or something like too out there thinking too like spiritual or something it's complicated everyone is is just it's more complicated than you think to be loved it's more simple than you think as well we're just trying our best to live this life without any rules and yet with so many rules that some apply to us some don't apply to us you know rules from our parents rules from school rules from our peers you know like as kids and rules from work rules from the government rules from tv shows and movies rules from all these places oh people should do this people should do that and just everything recently we had this conversation that made me see it that way oh you're just trying your best to make sense of this world that kind of doesn't make sense and you're just trying your best to be loved like i am like everyone is seeing it that way made it very different to end this tonight i don't know what to tell you i wish that he would come on here i, I really wish that we would have a joint youtube video that's like utopian thinking right there maybe one day because i just i wish that he would not feel shy <laughs> he has so much beauty to bring into the world he has so much that the world is missing out on and i just hope that he shines and i hope that's how he sees this as well i don't know i'm gonna go i have to go it's pretty late 
I don't feel too good about this vlog or whatever. I feel like this is too long and um, just all over the place and whatever. Uh, and it's daunting. Ugh. But anyways, talk to you later and we'll see how everything goes. Cool. Bye.